important. We do now have empowered. Most of all those things I don't understand. Now I understand. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Afalabi Abiodo. Um, I want to thank Mr. Oji for inviting me. I actually got called to make this presentation just yesterday. You know, and um, even before listening to Chinwe, you know, I've also had this. I've had this habit of when I'm called to serve, you know, make sacrifice, volunteer. You know, I mean, except I have something doing, I'm always willing to volunteer and support in the two way I can. Particularly because, you know, my success story is because I have so many people along the way that have also volunteered, made sacrifice for me. So the only way I can appreciate what I've gotten from people, you know, because um, what I'm good, good at is um, getting the best out of my network. I squeeze my network. You know, so today one of my first goals is before leaving this room, I must at least establish relationship with a minimum of 10 contacts, powerful contacts that will take me to another level. So I'm asked to speak on a topic that would awaken the entrepreneur in you. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a salesman. I'm a boy from the street. When Mr. Um, um, the man from you know, Fidelity. Okay, Mr. Ken Opara, right? Uh, he said something which was also kind of connected to my story. He said money is not what you need. Then the question is, if money is not what we need, then what do we need to become a successful entrepreneur? I know what we need. You know, because what we need is also what has taken me um, this far. What we need is what I refer to as the can-do spirit. Great. In the jungle, we all know that elephant is the biggest. Um, the giraffe is the tallest. Cheetah runs very fast. Um, tortoise, the craftiest. Uh, from the fable we read, they said tortoise, you know, the smartest of all. But interestingly, the lion is the king of the jungle. What the lion has that all these other animals didn't have and, um, is what I summarize as greed. The lion is courageous, has no fear, it can go any length. Now the interesting part of it is, particularly in, um, uh, amongst you know, the, the, the lion family, the male actually does nothing other than eat, and mates. So if this lazy uh, so-called animal still dominates the jungle, then he has something that is unique. Uh, as an entrepreneur, I actually started my business retailing recharge card. I sincerely hope by the time I'm done with sharing my story, you know, I would, uh, I would have awakened the entrepreneurial spirit in everybody seated here. If we have um, people looking forward to move from um, the banking sector, but since we have more bankers here, to also start something of their own. I retail recharge card. So when she was said she has uh, someone that is running Global Com Show, I, I, my assumption was she was referring to me, you know, because for um, between 2003 and 2007, I was actually running Global Com Show. You know, I was one of those recharge card sellers that the only thing we do for operator is to help them collect the cash. I retail recharge card, I make phone calls, I have my kiosk on Odolami Street, very close to where they sell casket. Is there someone that knows that? There's all kiosk between 2002 and 2003. I'm a young man that waves people down, you know, to sell recharge card to them. That's how I started my business. So I moved from selling recharge card to also become um, a sub dealer to dealers, then later I became the biggest um, dealer in Lagos Island. You know, the business was doing very well. <laughs> Unfortunately, that success was not deserve the club. So, can you take it back, please? <laughs> you know, because the turnover we were doing, I mean, on a daily basis, 
seven million, eight million. The truth of the matter is we were just cash collectors. We were selling at a loss. We were not making profits. Unfortunately, because for me, I finished from Lagos State Polytechnic and started business, I didn't have all the requisite skills to run, to manage turnover of that size. I mean, to run a recharge card business when we were doing it then, you would need um, all, almost every infrastructure you have in a typical banking hall, cashiers that would do the counting and all of that. Every day it's an issue of reconciliation, missing pack of cards, plus the fact that we are also chasing a back end that most of the time never comes. To cut the long um, story short, because as much as possible I don't want to spend more than um, the allocated 15 minutes. By 2005, at the age of 26, I was already owing 26 million. You know, you can understand why it doesn't deserve a round of applause. It's taking it back. <laughs> and it's because time doesn't permit, I actually can account for the 26 million. I mean, if you are selling recharge card on a daily basis and you are losing an average of um, 35,000 depending on the loss of the day. One of my mistakes also again was um, inexperience, so I was over trading. A good example of some of my mistake was I diverted, you know, um, capital from Globalcom transaction from the credit trade facility we have from Globalcom to intercellular transaction. And what did we do? We ordered phones for intercellular to sell um, on a partnership basis, a partnership that was not documented. We were supposed to run a promo, we imported about 1,200 phones, and the cost of each phone from US you know, was at 8,500. Intercellular buys at 12,000, and they sell at 13,000, you know, because their own interest is more connecting numbers on their network. So. Uh, they reached out to me and said they want to run this promo and they needed suppliers that can supply as much as 1,200. So to outsmart my contemporaries, what did I do? I was quick to place the order. Diverted money from Globalcom to Intercellular. But the unfortunate part of it is again because of my inexperience. I don't even know what an MOU was. There was nothing like an MOU, there was nothing like an agreement, so I supplied. Uh, two weeks after my supply, Reltel introduced the Touchlight phone to the market at 3,000 Naira. Intercellular, of course, I mean, was not selling my phones again. My smarter contemporaries were, were busy doing what? Going to Reltel, unlock the Reltel phone and sell to Intercellular. So after another four weeks, Intercellular called me and asked me to come and pick my phones. So if you look at the difference, because eventually I ended up selling the phones at about 4.5. So if you look at 4,000 times 1.2, I'm giving you, you know, the breakdown of how 26 million, how I got to 26 million. And 26 million was actually, you know, collateralized. You know, I got it to my grandmother's um, property. My mom is just one of six um, siblings, so you can understand <laughs> so you can, you can understand um, um, the problem I, I, mean, I have to, um, to deal with. Part of my problem, again, bankers are here, and I really wish that my account officer back in 2005 is here. The 26 million also has to do with some bad bankers, you know, um, that, were, that also took advantage of my inexperience. Money was sent for deposit because of our turnover. It was not paid into the account as expected. Um, my banker, I thought he was doing me a loan because I got, and he helped me arrange and facility. And when he comes knocking on my door for a loan of 500,000, I don't waste time to, um, to, to lend 500,000. So before you know it, what I have as um, uh, outstanding with my account officer is in excess of 5 million. So you can see the makeup of my 26 million. On my way back from one of my um, customers, I got a call from the bank that they've actually sent 
um, officials to my grandmother's house. My aunt that was not even aware of them, um, the transaction called and said, they said they come, they are here to take over mama's property. And she's surprised that um, this happened and nobody knows about it. Before I knew it, mama has landed because I was coming from, and it wasn't something I expected. So what did I do? I took the next bus to Orile, from Orile to my two, my two to Ghana. And I felt running away was the way to deal with it. You know, because it was just too much for me, 26 million, 26 years. So I felt the problem was not itself. You know, they will look for me for a while and life will continue. Property most likely would be sold. Mama has another one in the Kurodugu for her. You know, so I just felt, I mean, running was the right thing to do. So I went to Ghana. Again, because of, you know, my can-do spirit in Ghana, I've settled in. In fact, I've gotten a job offer from a Lebanese club in Busu within a week. I mean, I'm very good with, um, with IT, so I helped them set up their Petri account, how to run the club in a more professional manner. So they already gave me a job, and I'll be earning an average of about $200 a month. So a new life I've started. But I got this email from my brother which was the turning point for me. And the email was, you can run for as long as you want, but this problem will haunt you for the rest of your life. Your grandmother in the hospital, your mom is also on her way too. So think about it. You know, it was just too much for me to deal with. I managed for another two days. The third day was as if that old woman was chasing me in my dream. <laughs> so, I was left with no other option than to come back to Lagos. Um, the interesting part of it is going to Ghana was a very long journey. But coming back was so short, and I wish it was longer. I went straight to the hospital, I saw my grandmother, what actually gave me the courage to move on was the reason why my grandmother was hospitalized. It wasn't because of the property. It was actually because of her missing the right grandson. The next day she was discharged. And we, she called me to her room. We had this close to two hours grandmother to grandson talk. And she said, it's a problem you created and you have to go back and solve that problem. Growing up, I, I grew up in Lagos Island. You know, I'm, I'm an average student. Um, my WAHEC, I had F9 in English, five credits. I managed to have the P7 to gain admission to Lagos State Polytechnic. So the only alternative for me was either to continue what I'm doing, you know, because when I finished school, the, the option of looking for a job was not even on the table because I managed to finish my town planning, OMD and HMD um, with lower credit. And not, not, none of the bankers here would even give me, they wouldn't even consider my, my application for any reason whatsoever. So I, I never bought that. I've never written any application before in my life. You know, so I. Um, so all those mistakes I've made, which I didn't get at the beginning, the first foundation was the frank talk I had with my grandmother. So the next thing I did was to get a lawyer. And my lawyer was actually very helpful. Um, we, we fought with the bank. We, we had this back and forth on uh, who should be responsible for the 26 million. But the lawyer up front told me that the max we can do is to get that 26 million discounted, um, um, reduce the interest rate because the truth of the matter is you took the money. Whatever you had with your bank manager, it's between the two of you. It has nothing to do with the bank. And truthfully, that was exactly what we got back um, from the bank. I can mention the bank's name today because they are no more intercontinental bank. My branch was the um, uh, uh, Nadia Zikwe branch. So we, the, my case had been transferred to the head office in Victoria Island. 
So eventually, we got the loan discounted to 16 million. And take a 12% interest with a three month moratorium. But all this uh, banking jargon, I became a better banker than most bankers. But <laughs> I was so familiar with most of their terminology. Uh, <laughs> so I was, we, we got that deal. So it was now a question of how to pay the 16 million. Three months moratorium. When I started business, I felt money was what I needed to be successful. And that takes me back to what I, I started with. It wasn't money, money wasn't what I needed. I needed the right idea. Get the right idea first, and money will chase you. So I started with minus 16 million. And to make things work, I need to figure out what new ideas I can drive to be successful. Um, again, because I'm good with IT, I work with some um, guys in um, Russia. We developed an internet accelerator, which was customized, ready for markets. In fact, Intercellular was ready to buy that accelerator also because internet was so bad then. You know, uh, um, the, uh, we were struggling with 56 kdps, 126 kdps, and then later 256. But my accelerator was so fantastic that it actually would. Um, there's a cache that holds every pages that you visited. So the next time you are visiting, you have that experience that is different from other users. Intercellular wanted to buy off me at 7 million, but I never wanted that arrangement. I want an arrangement that they would sell it at their agreed 4,500 per license. And I would get my 2,000, the cellular kit, 2,500. Again, I also did not appreciate the value of money. I should have taken that 7 million when I had the opportunity, but I did not. The offer was not on the table again. I lost it, and before you know it, they were, we had faster internet. So I still had to deal with my uh, 16 million. So I came across this idea from research, which I'm sure virtually everybody would have used that service now. Um, the closed user group service. CUG service. CUG service, I happen to be the pioneers of that solution in Nigeria. Okay, because I came across it in one of my research that there's a virtual private network you can get mobile lines to talk for free, the, I mean, at and was doing it in US. Okay, so I, I get Intercellular for some reason, I'm working with them. So I went to Intercellular that I like this service. Unfortunately, they were having their own issues then, so it didn't work. So I moved on to Starcom. But again, I'm wiser now. I know that you, I mean, one of the things you must learn in business, documentation, agreement, you know, all those things now I know. So before talking to Starcoms, I had my lawyer. We had the negotiation, they liked the, the, uh, the solution. That's why if Starcoms happens to be the first company that was driving CUG service. You know, and um, that timekeeper, that was very... So we, the agreement was signed. They, I mean, they, are, they, are, they agree that I can actually broker that service, look for customers. So I'm moving from a B2C um, line of business now to business to business. Learning how to write proposal now becomes an issue. Writing proposal to organizations because, I mean, the solution I'm trying to sell now are for organizations. Again, minus 6 million, uh, minus 16 million. Intercellular and Starcoms would not release their phones if you don't bring cash. So again, with my lawyer again, we're able to negotiate a trade facility. You know, um, a, a, a three-month trade facility that when the phones are taken, I have three months to pay back. I was licensed. It was just very exceptional um, um, relationship I had with Starcoms. Also with my uh, my um, uh, customers, I also had to come up with something unique to get the product to sell. So it goes back to whatever you have, you also must know how to market it. Nobody will market it for you. As I went, the uh, service came out, virtually all Nigerians has one phone or the other. 
So my offer was free phones for free calls. When I got to um, GT Bank and I um, submitted my proposal that I wanted to see the head of admin, I've forgotten the name of the man now, he has retired. He asked them to call me in that I said I have free phone for him to make free calls. He was interested, he wanted to know about it. So he called me in, they were still at uh, in July, and, me. and I said this is what I have. Going back and forth, he wanted to tell the solution. And he asked that it should be implemented for the securities, you know, in July. I mean, that was the first breakthrough for me. We had an MOU with um, GT Bank and five other organizations that wanted the solution. Now it becomes, uh, the phones were taken from Starcom, supplied as expected. But the business must continue. I need to pay Starcom. So from my analysis, I know I will need another 1.7 for this thing to be sustainable. So I started writing banks again because I read again, updating yourself. You have to research. So I got to know that there's one SME fund with central bank that banks compulsory must give to SMEs. So I wrote all bank entities directly. That this money is with you. What are you doing with it? <laughs> it's for SMEs. Surprisingly, I got um, uh, a, a call from, from GT Bank. And the call I got was from um, Aulawa Road, a letter that came from um, the MD of Blessed Memory. He minuted on it and said, do the needful. So the bank uh, manager called me and said, do the needful in banking is follow the process. That what you have is not bankable. 1.7 million Term loan, one year, because I wanted one year and I was asking for three months moratorium again, coming from the challenge I had. But thankfully, my bank officer now, my wife she's here, she had issues with her stack on phone. So I took the phone, I internet solved the problem for her. So we're going back and forth. Then the next thing I heard was I needed to come to the off head office to defend what I presented because it was beyond her. I eventually got the 1.7 million, one year time lost, you know. And from that, I also realized some of my mistakes, which is education. So what did I do? In the process that I got uh, back to business, I enrolled in uh, Enterprise Development Center, EDC, for their certificate in um, entrepreneurship management because education was important. My case, my business was the case study virtually in all classes. For the 450,000 Naira for the program, I paid in 10 installments. You know, because now I understand why it's important to be prudent with money. By 2009, because I have the commitment of paying 607 on a monthly basis. By 2009, I, fin I finished paying everything that I was doing in the Continental Bank. I went there and I said I want to close my account. They said, why should I? I said, the next time I'm coming, I'm buying a bank. <laughs> so I left them. Um, so the money was paid. Education was important. You know, now I'm empowered. Most of all those things I don't understand, now I understand with the, in fact, the first formal education I can really identify with what my um, EDC program. Then from EDC, I now moved on because I'm still in telecom. I went to Birmingham and had my master's in telecommunication management. From Birmingham, again, talking about your development plan. I didn't stop at that. I, I applied for a Stanford C program. I was selected. My business case, the, the case was um, I mean, um, uh, one of the few that was selected. I finished that program. Stanford saw the value in what we did again. I was also selected with five of my management team for the um, executive management training one year in California. In 2017, I was invited uh, to the Global Entrepreneurship Summit with Barack Obama. Again, because I understand that education is important and I have to keep following whatever you believe in. Today I'm better known as Nigerian time keeper because I manage time for 
more than 1,300 organizations. With this human resource management application we created that is called TAMS, a time management focus. So when you gave Mr. Adinkwe, because I also got his name too, you actually beat me to it. I'm very passionate about punctuality. And that's why, I mean, over 1,000 organizations using our solution in Nigeria today, Ghana and Guinea, they appreciate the value of time management because it's the foundation for um, productivity. So I hope with my very brief presentation, I've been able to awaken the entrepreneurial spirit in us. It really doesn't matter the qualifications you have. People would have looked down on you. I mean, you don't have a two one. You don't have a two one. That doesn't have two one. <laughs> you don't have a two one. There's no opportunity for you. The truth of the matter is, it's not necessarily that two one that matters. The I can do spirit is either a yes or a no. Thank you.